So in Florida, you have fruitful trees talking about mango spacing, and there's like a ton of debate about that in Florida. Here, we don't have that problem because our mango trees don't grow that fast. We have a different problem. We have problems with growth and problems with, you know, our mangoes only gets about three to five pushes per year. And uh, all they want to do is flower when you graft the tree. And uh, I'm going to show you a few things. I have a strategy on uh, growing mangoes and uh, I conflict with, uh, with some friends of mine. And I want to show you my perspective and uh, you can make up uh, your mind on what you want to do. So here we have an Alfonso. We got a low graft right here. And you got this one. So these two branches is probably like one, two, maybe three years of growth. And look, this is the second set of flowers. It doesn't want to grow, right? My strategy now is to have high grafts, allow the seedling rootstock to have nodes that push leafy growth right here. So if this thing had two pushes of leafy growth, it'd be like this tall already, right? Say another branching that tall. And uh, I can just graft onto that in the future. And then it'll want to branch out some more and let it from the rootstock and then graft onto that. And it, you know, it might cost a little bit more if, uh, you know, bu uh, buying scions or preferably if you have local scions from your own stock, that would uh, be helpful. But, you know, time is money, guys. Uh, branching, that's to me is equity. Let me show you another issue. So we have another low graft. This is a sugar loaf. Look, another set of flowers. This is the second flower, guys. This tree, I kid you not, is smaller than last year. Now, this will hopefully push two leafy growth this year, maybe hopefully three. I'm hoping, okay? So that's an example. Here's another one. This is a cotton candy, again, a low graft. You got these pushes right here. That's probably one, two, three, four, five, and six, maybe seven years. Well, I don't know if it's seven years, but like, no, that's not, that's one, two, three, four, five, six pushes on this thing. Again, if there's branching here from the rootstock that push vegetative growth, you know, they, then it'll be a bigger tree, right? Um, I, these flowers right here pushed one flower node already and, and if it pushes another one because our temps are still below 60 then this tree is gonna grow extremely slowly let me show you another one this is a carry tree right here look it looks freaking sad it perks up in the summer but it looks freaking sad you got branching here but these branching are above the root the, uh, the graph and so flower it just wants to flower right and these flowers got hit with powdery mildew and they fall off before they're ready to be picked off and so this has a risk of having a rebloom because our temps are still below 60. they're about to hit 60 uh soon but if it pushes out another bloom i'm screwed this this tree is just gonna grow extremely slowly let me show you another one and uh here's a square mango right you got your graft point right here and look <laughs> grafts want a flower now if we had a few if we left a few branches that were from the rootstock and it pushed leafy growth um, then this tree would get exponentially bigger all right now this is a pickering now pickering is a slow grower on its own right but look, this is the second bloom. Look at that. Second bloom. And it's a low graft. It doesn't want to push out below the graft anymore. So any bud on here, at least the first two, maybe three, are going to be blooms. And that sucks, guys, because I don't want these blooms on this tree. This this size tree is not ready to is not ready to fruit. It's you know, it's not gonna be able to, to hold it. And so it's wasting its time here in California. And uh, let me show you one that uh, is a strategy of mine. 
All right, so this strategy I came up with uh, after watching a bunch of Rich's videos. <laughs> Rich, uh, thank you for that. Uh, so anyways, we have this graph here. This is a new graph, he hasn't pushed yet. But say, Nick, say this was a push and it pushed out leafy growth, right? Or, or actually, this is a new graph and say next year, it'll be up here. And, it, and uh, all it wants to do is push flowers. But the thing is, we have this. This right here is from the rootstock. Look at this. It already got, it already got a push. <laughs> it already got a damn push. Okay, and then it's got these buds here that most people would would remove, right? Because you want, they wanted to focus its energy on on this on this uh, graph right here. But the thing is, it's it just wants to flower. <laughs> so if we remove that next year, that energy is gonna be diverted. To flower production maybe two times okay but if you allow this to go and use that energy to put vegetative flush this year and maybe it'll be up to here by the end of the year so you got maybe one and maybe two right maybe even it'll have three two or three branching that's two and maybe it'll have another flush right so it'll be maybe up to here if you allow it so that's my strategy. And in the future, then we can graft onto that, right? Yeah, we'll spend some money on scions unless we have the scions already from a mother tree, right? And then allow some of that to push vegetative flesh from the rootstock still and then graft. And again, that's my strategy because the problem is that these mango trees in California, again, they are so slow growing because all they want to do is flower. They waste all that time and energy on flowering. And ideally, Rich's advice would be to like just allow this tree, this seedling tree to like just grow. Just let it grow. But I mean, I'm kind of a mixture of that strategy because I actually want to get a hold of, of scions and actually grafting it into my property. Now, if I had the mother tree already, and I have enough scions, I'll probably do what Rich advised, which is just let this thing grow as a seedling tree until maybe about this high, and then graft onto it. But this is my strategy. Let me show you a few more. All right, you see this? That's a graft, okay? That's a peach cobbler. And look, on the rootstock, this is a Corriente rootstock, it wants to push vegetative growth, and I'm gonna allow it because that's going to be growth and growth and branching and leafy vegetation that to me is equity and equity you just don't want to cut guys this is uh, these leaves are solar panels i don't want to cut that off uh, let me show you some trees that are a little bit older this is a jakarta tree and uh, look at it the graft is all the way down there okay uh, you can see that but the graft is down there and uh, <laughs> this is the second flower flush and I kid you not guys this tree remained the same size it's been in the ground for about four years and it has nothing to show for it because it just wants to freaking flower and so I'm implement implementing a certain strategy where I'm just grafting onto it right now this is probably gonna flower also but any vegetative flesh that it's, it comes up with, I'm just going to graft onto it. Because I just got to add equity, add branches, right, into this tree that is not growing. All right, this is on Iman Pasan, same thing. But it's starting to show growth a little bit, okay? Uh, but again, second flower flesh, right? This one's cut off right before we hit 60s. So I wonder if this is going to have a third rebloom or a second rebloom, right? So that's a third flower flush of the year. I wonder if that's going to happen. And so I'm implementing this strategy where I'm putting a wedge graft onto, uh, onto this and uh, adding vigorous varieties so that this thing can, even though it leaves out the, the, the vigorous... Uh, the vigorous scion should be able to at least push and get this young, oh, it's not young, it's four years in the ground and it has nothing to show for it. And so uh, guys, 
nice strategy. I'll, you know what, I'll show you a different tree just to show you. All right, so here's the orange sherbet grafted onto an Atoulfo. And here is a Carla, right? There's your two pushes. is a vegetative push from the rootstock. And I'm going to allow it to grow, guys. I'm going to allow this to build equity, right? Equity and rentals, right? You got these, uh, these solar panels that's going to be producing energy to eat what I believe would feed this rootstock. I uh, mean this this graft eventually right and uh, uh, that's the strategy allow for a high graft like a high graft not low graft so that the rootstock can push vegetative growth where I want it to here's another one I got a coconut cream that uh, pushed behind there on a Kent rootstock and I have this sweet tart that just recently pushed and there is a vegetative flush from the rootstock that I'm gonna allow to grow and I'll eventually add another um, sweet tart right on it so I'll graft on to a sweet tart again and here is a bigger size rootstock this is a 15 gallon it's about 8 feet tall maybe 10 and, and look, I'm grafting vigorous varieties on the lower ends. That, that's, I believe, a cac and a maha. And then I'm going to see that, all of that stuff right there. That's three grafts of Super Alfonso. Right here, we got other rootstocks, similar rootstocks. Again, right here, different roots. This is a Kent. No, actually, this is a Keat. And uh, right here we got fruit punch on this branch. Up there we have honey kiss because honey kiss, I heard, is a dwarf rootstock, so it's better to be on the way up there. So we'll probably put an Angie right here, and maybe a Duncan or something similar. That that's 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 a good producer. Let me show you some more. Ooh, ah. Welcome to the grafting station, guys. So here we have a rootstock. This is an Atawufo. So we have the high grafts right here. And I want this to push vegetatively because next year, we, oh, actually, well, hold up. So I'm going to allow this to grow. Now, this is taking energy because it's still not green. Once these leaves turn green, it becomes solar panels and it becomes energy producers. And so I'm going to allow this to grow. I might even allow this to grow and branch out, branch out even more. And eventually, I'll top work that branch and then graft high again and again and again until I get a big tree. And that's kind of my strategy. And you can see the similarities in this other big tree right here. We're doing, uh, um, it's kind of like a wedge veneer right here. That's a sweet tart. And... Uh, doing similar things on this end and I, again I want vegetative flush because these graphs next year almost guaranteed are gonna do two flushes of flowers two or three okay and it's gonna not it's gonna have a slow growth but with the rootstock having vegetative flush like this and allowing that to grow and graft onto it and graft onto it eventually we will have a big tree here in California preventing the issues that we have with trees growing so sluggishly for the the only reason being the grafts a uh, grafted trees just wants to flower and so this is my strategy that I'm implementing that I'm implementing uh, thanks to Rich's advice and videos so based on my observations from his experience and also my experience for the last seven years here growing slow growing mango trees and so here's the graphs uh, we have one that might oh look at that cat trying to push we got a bunch here right here okay got a sweet tart with 
Look at that. Vegetative flush. And again, high graphs. Note the high graphs. This one right here, this is a smaller tree. And so it's still considered a high graph because if it was a low graph, we'd graft it all the way over here. But see, we're not sacrificing these plants, these equity. This is equity, right? This right here is equity. Now, if this doesn't take, it'll kind of render the top part uh, maybe uh, damaged. But if this takes, see, these two vegetative flushes, that's building equity, building solar panels. And uh, again, right here. So I want to know what you think, guys. Again, this is a uh, strategy I'm implementing here in Southern California and may work in California. And it's a debate similar to, you know, fruitful trees over in Florida talking about mango spacing. And uh, there's no right or wrong way to do it. I'm just showcasing my experience and my strategy and I could be completely wrong. And uh, my friend uh, who does, you know, top work, the big trees, uh, he's working with like really mature trees. And uh, if, if I had access to those kinds of rootstocks, I'll probably definitely do something like that similar. But I'm working with smaller trees. Even the big trees that I have, I really don't want to cut down because I, understand that those branches that the trees spent many 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 years building i don't want to just cut that off um yeah and then you know you got the branches and it's kind of like exponential right you got a branch you you you, you do one graft you cut off everything you got two flowers that's pushed and maybe two flushes but if you had three that you graft onto, yeah, it'll cost you more money, costs you, what, six to eight dollars per graft, plus shipping, but it's exponential. You get, each get two flower flushes, and maybe two to three vegetative flush, and next year, it'll be more. It's exponential, at least that's what I'm, I'm thinking. Correct me if I'm wrong, guys. Let me know what you think. This is probably gonna be a debate that's probably gonna be ongoing for several years, until I get adequate data to show the results of my practice here. All right, guys. Um, save the seeds. Save your seeds. Because you can grow trees for cheap by just putting the seeds in the ground and grafting it later. Like this seedling avocado here that's two years in the ground. Almost ready to graft onto and uh, this mango seed right here uh, that we planted in the ground uh, this was back in August and uh, you'll have a mango tree so this is gonna push this was just last year from August and then eventually slowly as you kind of forget neglect and it just goes it just has uh, drip irrigation so you planted the seed on the drip irrigation uh, where an emitter is and it'll just grow and eventually you'll get this tall then that tall and then as you're learning how to graft and learning that skill and improving it eventually you'll get a ton of rootstocks that you can work with right here that's a seedling tree that's a beautiful seedling mango that is one and actually we're planning on putting more as kind of an insurance and so we'll put more mango seeds here and allow it to see which mangoes are going to do best and if anything we can graft them together and have a multi rootstock mango that we can use to graft later.